Hey guys, welcome to Digital Marketers Bootcamp 2019. My name is Matt De Cruz, and I'd like to welcome you guys to the Complete Marketing Growth Framework. Um, what we're going to be covering over the next few weeks is essentially mastering digital marketing methods. Now, what we're going to be looking at is social media, SEO, YouTube, email, Facebook marketing strategies, Google Analytics, digital marketing blueprints, WordPress website builders, and more. So it sounds like a lot, but guys, don't worry, I've got you guys covered. What I'm going to basically do is walk you through the process and show you exactly what our tools, our frameworks does, and I'm sure that you guys will love it. Okay, so why do we do what we do? What's the point of digital marketing? The whole point of digital marketing is essentially to get to know your customers. And what we've done at Network Empire is we've developed tools that helps us look at any industry, doesn't matter what industry we're in, but it helps us to essentially get the market analysis we need, get the keywords we need, get the information we need to understand who we're dealing with, how we're going to deal with them, and how we can get our message across. And DMT does this for us in a second. So for the new guys, let me introduce yourself. My name is Matt De Cruz. I'm the CEO of Network Empire and one of the founding members of the company. And basically what we've done at Network Empire over all the years is we've always surrounded ourselves with people that are much smarter and specialists in different fields that we work in. And what it does is it always gives us a great opportunity to see digital marketing from multiple angles, multiple perspectives, and also allows us to develop tools that actually work when people use them in the industry. So let me quickly introduce you guys to the team who have helped us with the growth framework as well as have had a lot of input into Digital Marketers Toolbox. So a little bit about myself, like I said, I'm the founder of Network Empire. I've been in the industry for nearly 20 years. I've been heavily involved in building call centers. We supported over 1,500 people in call centers with a team of eight guys. Been involved in programming, digital marketing, um, co-invent of Killer Keywords, Kraken 2.0, DWS. And I'm the, the inventor of Digital Marketers Toolbox with the help of Jeff and Mark and Welton and all the boys that were involved getting us to this point. And also, I've done a lot of training over the years with a lot of companies and with people with technical aspects of simplifying their systems when it comes to digital marketing. So let me just walk you through the team and introduce you guys to them. Mike Clay. Mike Clay is the blueprint specialist. If you're an agency and you're wanting to sell digital marketing blueprints to companies, Mike has uh, basically branched off and specialized in that field and is great training on that. Uh, more links will come out later on with how you can get access to the digital marketing blueprint sales training from Mike. Next, we have Jeff, Jeff Smith, old friend of mine. We've been online for, for many years, and Jeff is basically the co-inventor with the WP Solar Builder. He's also the inventor of SEO Ultimate Framework, the SEO Ultimate uh, WordPress plugin, which you can see has had over 2 million downloads. Huge update is basically coming out very, very soon. This is January 2019 that we're speaking now, but basically very soon the SEO Ultimate rewrite is coming out and it's looking great. I've seen some sneak previews and I'm very, very excited with what it does. And it ties perfectly into what we're going to be showing you guys over the next few weeks. So shout out to Jeff great work. I'm really looking forward to seeing the SEO Ultimate WordPress, WordPress plugin coming out. That's like the latest version and I think they've rewritten 300,000 lines of code. So huge update coming guys. Um, Jeff handles all the technical SEO for Network Empire. He's got the SEO bootcamp and we're going to make reference to that for all the guys who wanted to learn the SEO side of things. Jeff is the commander in chief when it comes to that and that's where he falls in. Next we've got the Facebook marketing side and this is Hernan Vequez. He's done a great course for us which we uh, have put into PowerCore and this is where you specialize with Facebook marketing. He teaches you how to use the interface, how to get the most out, how to set up your funnels using Facebook marketing and it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Shout outs to Heran. Great guys. Uh, links to his profiles and his website will be there if you're looking for guys that are specializing in Facebook marketing. Heran's the person you want to speak to. Okay, and from the copywriting point of view, we've got our copywriting specialist, and that is Welton Nakota. Great shout out to Welton. 
Walton does strategic copywriting. He's a digital marketing specialist. He's a certified student of Network Empire, so he really understands it. He's been behind the scenes when we did the Power Core training. He knows our systems, and basically he's given us a lot of great insights into actually writing copy. So links will be to Walton's website if you need to speak to a strategic copywriter. Walton's the person you want to chat to. Okay, so let's get ready to talk about digital marketing 2019. So in the next few slides, I'm going to ask you guys a few questions. Big question, guys. Do you know how to attract your audience? Do you know how to find your audience? Are you actually speaking to them correctly? Do the search engines understand what you've written to connect you with the right kind of people? These are the topics we're going to cover over the next few weeks, and uh, we're going to really look at this in detail. And as we go through the growth framework, which you'll see shortly, um, you're sort of understanding how we can actually isolate this and start building things that really help us connect with the people that we need to connect to in multiple different ways using different skills for digital marketing. So when we attract our audience, there's basically two things we are doing. Outbound. That's when we're pushing our story. We're saying who we are, what we do, how we do, what we do, why we do it. Okay. Then we've got the inbound, the pull. This is we're attracting people. And this is the customer story. We need to talk to their pain points. We need to understand what they need, what they want. We have to understand how we're going to get it to them. What are the logistics? How are we going to deliver it to them? How are we going to actually meet them? How are we going to help them achieve their goals? With digital marketing and the growth framework, basically our story collides with the customer story and in the center, that's where you get our perfect pitch. So as we go on this journey in digital marketing, we discuss this topic over the next few weeks, um, you're going to start seeing how we're constantly looking at what's our story, what's the customer story, what's the symbiotic relationship between the two, and how do we find the most efficient ways to essentially connect with the people that we want to talk to to sell our products or our services. So the next thing I want to think about is, do you have a modern marketing funnel that drives sales? Just answer yes or no. You can even write this question down. Just write these few down and actually think about them. Is your client base growing or shrinking? Are you nurturing your client base? What's happening in your business? Are you guys battling to get customers every week, every month? Is it hard? So we're going to show you guys ways how we can actually make your business grow and how we can automate things over this period. And it's going to help you guys quite a lot. Are you converting your hard-earned traffic into customers? Is what you're building actually creating sales? Have you got too many pages to manage? Is it a huge website? Are there 50,000 funnels? What are you guys actually doing? Is it efficient or not? The modern buyer's journey has changed. Technology's changed. Have you adapted your marketing strategy to reach your audience? So what we're going to go through over the next few weeks is show you how we build out our systems and actually walk through them in a very efficient way to help you stay adaptable for this change that happens with our people as technology evolves. So where does planning fit into your marketing strategy? Once again, how are you connecting to your audience? Are your customers happy with the service they get? Are they becoming brand advocates? Are they actually creating citations? Are they writing responses? Are they giving us five stars for the services that we do? How are we engaging with them? How do we actually help these people move into our ascension ladder? How do we create value? Biggest question ever, do you want to rip the pants of your competitors? Then this is the one I love the most. Okay, How would you like to take the advertising dollars that they've spent and be able to extract what's working for them so that you can look at it and incorporate what they've done to your advantage. Over the next few weeks, we're going to walk you guys through this process and show you how we do this through the different mediums of di digital marketing. Okay, so here's the big idea. In order for us to essentially get into any market, we need to have a framework that we work with. It's got certain rules, certain structures, and it's a process we can repeat time and time again. When we get our processes right, we go into a production mode and we can start scaling and the same system comes through over and over again and as we scale we get used to how the system works and we can refine it. Okay, 
This is what the growth framework is all about. It's basically a 24-7 robot salesperson, administration clerk, and a support system, which is broken into three points, which is online marketing, automation, and essentially your business, your back office. Through this course, we're going to make reference to different parts of the framework where we do certain things. And one thing to know up front is Digital Marketers Toolbox has been designed with this framework underpinning it to get us the information we need as fast as possible in a structured way that we can utilize it and use it in our business. So from a principle of or a big idea, what is the growth framework? The growth framework is an evergreen cycle that runs around in a perpetual motion. It's broken down into four points or four quadrants and it incorporates the idea of our story, our customer story, the growth zones, it looks at cold traffic, warm traffic and hot traffic, it talks about basically attracting our customers, nurturing our customers, converting these customers into uh, long-term customers and engaging with them. The whole system is focused around bringing people to the epicenter so we can have a symbiotic relationship that works well for everybody. It's got to work well. Okay, so this is the big underpinning thing. It's a perpetual motion. If we neglect our customers that are hot, they'll become cold. If we work with our customers, we'll warm up to them. Once they get to know us and they trust us, obviously they're going to get hot for us and become brand advocates. It's the same in every single business. So this is what the growth framework is all about. It's about your business and how you can make it into something that's successful that works without you being involved in it. So we're going to cover these next few points in the next few slides and then I'm going to jump across into the real world scenario for this week which is basically the start of the market analysis. Okay, so getting started, when we speak about the growth framework, basically what we're looking at is basically five steps. Number one, identify the market. That's what we sort of look at today, methods you can use today to do that. Next, we're going to go through a stage of developing our strategy to meet the market's needs. That's where we build the bones of our digital marketing plan. Number three, detailed plan to execute the strategy. This is where we're actually going to look and think about what actions are we going to take that's going to get us the desired results that we need from the intelligence we've gathered through Digital Marketers Toolbox. Rule number four, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Okay, everyone runs around in a state of paranoia and they're scared to do anything, they're scared they're going to break something. Just go for it, just do it, just build it, get it live. Once we get the feedback from analytics, we can make better decisions. So, as we work our way through the framework, we're going to basically look at core ideas of what we can use to build our structure, to build our plan, to get our digital marketing blueprint working, and then we're going to start executing it and getting it live. And number three, the last, sorry, number five, the last point is have a level of paranoia. Always watch your competition. Why? Watch what they're doing. Understand how they're making their money. Define how they pitch their product define what makes you different from them, what makes you better than them. And number three, use what's working for them to their disadvantage and to your advantage. And we're going to show you guys how to do that. Okay, so basically these three stages, identify the market, develop your strategy, how you're going to break into it, detail out exactly what you need to do to break into your market. And go for it. Watch what your competitors do, follow the money. That's the big thing. I'm going to say follow the money. When you follow the money, when you keep your eyes on the money, you'll see who's making the money, you'll see how they're doing it, you'll see what they're selling to do it, and you're basically going to look at what their strategies are, and from that you can then calculate what you need to do to get the results. Okay, so we're going to keep things very, very simple. We're not going to, in this course, go into massive theories, a lot of in-depth stuff. We're going to give you top-level ideas just to help you start creating a structure in your mind of what are the steps you've got to follow. And the very first thing I think about is when I identify the market, is there a market for this product or service that's being offered? Okay, it's no point trying to sell something if people are not interested in it. Okay, it's got to be profitable because remember, whenever whatever you sell online, number one, you need a server. Number two, if you're not using servers and, and WordPress, you might need ClickFunnels to sell your front. You're going to have to spend money somewhere along the line to either get your product online to get it served, to drive traffic to it, there's money spent all the time. So make sure that what you're selling 
can be sold online okay and there's many ways you can do this uh, you can sell things through the phone calls you can sell things through basically guys filling in forms there's many ways we can do the marketing but the primary thing we're identifying the market is the skeleton and we're going to look at eight points shortly uh, to help us think about what we're going to be doing next step two when we develop the strategy we need to make sure that it meets the demands of the market. So we have to identify the market for the product, we have to develop the strategy to fulfill the objective, we have to get focused, we have to really think, okay, what is it that I'm selling? And then we have to think about what is the model? How are those cogs are gonna turn to spit out money at the end? We have to think about the machine, okay? So when I speak about the framework, think about it in layers. When we execute the plan, it's good to put the plan on paper. We need to document, okay, what exactly are we going to do? Because remember, every plan sounds perfect until you get into the pitch, okay? Every battle plan sounds perfect on paper until you get onto the battlefield. And when you get into the battlefield, that's when you really start playing the game and things move. It's a dynamic environment, okay? So for that, you have to always be able to have a structure that you can work with that allows you to execute parts of the strategy depending on how the market responds to what you're doing. You start playing the game. You're on the pitch, things start happening. Do you want your A team or do you want to have your D team or E team or your F team to actually execute the plan? So everybody asks about outsourcing and all that kind of stuff. Make sure that the people who execute the work and the plan that you have are competent and can actually do the job properly. If you get that right in the beginning, that's going to help you a lot, okay? So, have a think on that. Lastly, don't be afraid to make mistakes. You know, if you don't try, you're not going to learn. Rather fail and fail fast than be scared to fail and never achieve nothing. Go build the site. Just do it. Get it up. And once you've done it, you realize, oh, it's not that hard. And as you're working and you start getting things live, you'll find out how things work, how they connect, how things respond, and it's going to give you an instinct for how things work online. Okay, so the way we do this is through the analytics and through the tracking that I'm going to show you in this course. Um, it allows us to identify where issues are, it allows us to correct mistakes as soon as we identify them, and the reason why we work this way is we want to constantly refine and make a machine run as efficient as possible. Number two, don't be silly with what you post online, guys. Um, you've got to change the way, you have to think about how social media has changed the way the world thinks. Everyone's got an opinion, everyone knows everything, and everyone's not scared to shout out what they think online. So whatever you post, expect a response. Okay, you need to change the way you think about what you're posting because there's a few things we have to figure. One, we've got to speak to the audience. Two, we have to write compelling content that essentially speaks to the machines. The machines number need to understand the thematic relevance or they need to understand the content of the story to give us the rankings and the traffic that we need. So, as we go through stages, I'm going to try and give you the bare bones of information through this boot camp to prepare you for the year, to give you the basics of what you need to get started. So, I don't want you to be afraid. I'm not going to overwhelm you guys with long, long lectures about thematic relevance, contextual relevance, backlink profits, schema. We'll deal with each thing as a method, as a simple process, and we'll walk our way through the framework and we'll just attend to things as we're going along and Digital Marketers Toolbox is going to help us basically get there. As I mentioned earlier, have a high level of paranoia, guys. Be paranoid. What's that guy doing? What it does is when we watch our competitors and we're always inquisitive about what, what they're doing and our Google Alerts are watching them, we very quickly can see how they operate online. And Digital Marketers Toolbox, um, I'm going to show you two ways of basically using the tool but when we use it to do market analysis on authorities in the, the industry, we can extract what works for them and how they're driving their sales and their traffic. We can look at this from a local perspective and we can compare a business to another business and how their footprint is online. The tool is very flexible, very dynamic, and it helps you achieve things very quickly. But the level of information and the way the information is compiled back to us is very insightful. So as I said before, always keep your money, eye on the money watch how the money flows through the markets. When you do that, you start seeing patterns and those patterns are traffic and we start identifying the traffic. It becomes simpler to actually 
make a decision on how you're going to plug into that traffic, what is the cost to do it, and what do you need to put in place so that that funnel can start working for you. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to talk you through the growth map framework. We're going to run through a mind map that I put out for you, and I'm going to basically tell you in a very simple way what it is that we're going to build over the next few weeks. Okay, and this applies to digital marketing agencies, this applies to people building their own websites, this applies to local SEO. The framework that I'm going to show you now can apply to any business and it's built an infrastructure that can scale. Okay, so you can start really cheap, but as your business grows, this infrastructure can actually scale with you. And uh, we're going to go over that next. Okay, guys, so over the next section, what I'm going to do is I want to just walk you guys through the framework, the growth framework, and just show you up front what are the properties we're going to use over the next few weeks with this course. And um, the reason why I've built this out this way is one, it's scalable. Two, it's very, very cost effective to get started. Three, we can plug in a lot of automation. And four, there's a lot of added benefits, especially for local SEO with this particular framework. So what I'm going to cover first is online framework. Um, in this module, we're going to look at the framework. Basically, these are the stages and the things we're going to be working with as we go along in a stack of priority. So the first thing we do is our market analysis. Once we understand the market, we understand our product, we understand what we're selling, we understand who we're competing with, we understand or have a good idea of how we're going to get traffic in the market, what types of methods we're going to use to actually drive this traffic to our funnels, then we basically got to build out our website, which is our W Run branded website. Okay. The very next thing is once we've bought out the website and we've got all our silos up and we've written our content and we've got everything prepped and ready and we've got our funnels integrated and we've gone through the transactional process, then we come back and we, if we're doing local stuff, add Google My Business. Once Google My Business is set up for your business, especially if you're doing a local service or product, then we're going to utilize that to basically reinforce our branded product or website and we're going to get that up and running. Once it's done, we'll then look at our social properties, which we call the WRS1 branded properties. These are all our Facebooks, Pinterest, LinkedIn, all the social properties where we're going to publish our news updates and all our things. Lastly, we're going to get to our blog. And if we wanted to blog and use content marketing as a strategy, we'll build the blog, which basically is a theme mirror of our money site. We'll speak more about that shortly. And then if we're going to get really fancy and do all kinds of things, we can build our War 2 sites. These are web automated rings. We cover these in detail in the Power Core. And uh, we, there's a lot of big updates I'm going to show you guys in this, especially in the Power Core course. Right. So the next thing we do is automation. How do we log all our leads? How do we communicate with the customers? So now we've got all our stuff working online. It's all set up. We need to do the wiring underneath it that uses that automation to actually start doing all our administration work and all our sales through the systems. And then finally, the business, we're going to use 360 Suite uh, to build this for this course. The reason why I'm saying this is we can start with uh, 6 or $8 is what it costs us for one email and it locks all the tools that we need. So have a very, 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 very barrier, low barrier to entry. We can basically get our email, our folders for storing our documentation. We've got analytics of what's going on. We've got the tag manager, which we're going to use. We can optimize and split test our pages. And we can write advanced reports in Data Studio. Surveys, we can speak to our customers, which ties back into market analysis. And then attribution, we can look at how things are working on our site. And on the audience center, on these two paid services, we can utilize that to drive more traffic. Okay, so this basically boils down to business administration. So we log into one place, we can store everything on this year and we can work. Now what's great about this is essentially if we're working with new customers and we are doing work for other businesses, the biggest challenge a lot of guys have is the business doesn't want to change what they've got at the moment. They don't want to learn new systems. They don't want to do all kinds of stuff. There's technical teams that don't want their stuff touched. Everybody's very protective over everything. Now to free you up, Basically, what you can do is with 360 for basically $7 a month, you can actually set up the infrastructure on this. Over here, you can set up your whole automation system to work with these properties. 
and you can build up the site, get it ranking, get the traffic coming in, and via things like Zapier, we can essentially migrate the information that they need most importantly to the actual business without impacting what they're doing. So we're going to basically run through this process as we go through the course and we're going to look at the different things. But in a nutshell, for any business that you're working with, there's three core things you're going to do. One, we're going to set up the infrastructure for our online marketing. Two, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff that's automated so that we get one set of reports coming out from the information. And number three, we're going to isolate it for the business so that the business can integrate at their own time without having too many headaches. Okay, so that's basically the framework. Now, the methods we apply once the framework's set up is what's going to give us the growth. And we're going to discuss that as we go through the processes. That's using YouTube and different types of things to drive more traffic. But uh, I hope you guys get the idea of what we're going to be building and what we're working on. It's very, very simple. We're going to basically use 360 to give us a lot of stuff at a very low cost. It's going to give us security. It's going to give us a scalable system. It's going to give us infrastructure that can work at a corporate level depending on how big the business is. So that's a major plus for this whole system because we can speak to any company at any point in time. So because we're starting off, what the last thing I'm going to cover on today's session is the market analysis. And we're going to basically look at this and then we're going to jump into DMT and we're going to look at a few things in the actual tool. And then after that, I'm going to basically give you guys your assignment that you should go and do for the week. Okay guys, so I'm going to walk you through the process now. I've logged into digitalmarketingtoolbox.app. Um, you'll see below this video, you'll check the links to the app so you can actually have a look. If you own the app, you can just log in. But basically, this will get you to see what's on the inside. Now, when we do market analysis, there's a few steps you've got to go through. So what I've done to make things very simple for you guys in Digital Marketing Toolbox is as we log in and we're on the dashboard, here where it says let's get started, we've got what we just discussed previously, the five steps to business success. There's identifying the market, developing the strategy to meet the market's needs, detailed plan to execute the strategy. Okay, those are our top three points that we're going to focus on. The skeleton, the bones, the meat. Simple. Okay, now to find these templates, I've created a whole bunch of templates for you guys to use. <clears throat> Underneath community and training, templates, you can see we've got 11 templates at this point in time. We will add to these templates as time goes on, and you'll always find the templates underneath the roadmap. Um, for the guys, if this is the first time that you're over here, basically the WordPress plugins, we use the Video Silo Builder, the One Feed Supercharger. Video Silo Builder is what we build the silo architecture for. It goes three tiers deep, silos, categories, supporting articles. It's got the ability to embed videos and video comments into the actual page as a holding page if you so choose. The One Feed Supercharger basically is a WordPress plugin that allows you to merge multiple RSS feeds into one feed. So to simplify that, I will take five feeds from different locations, I will add them, I will then add my keywords to filter what content I want to come out, and that will come out in one feed, which I can then embed into a blog or anywhere else that I want. Okay, um, customer services, if you want private training, you can contact us. Here's a work hub. This is where we put our courses. You'll find PowerCore and Local Pro there if you have purchased those courses. There's free courses there as well. Um, a lot more is going to come out there in the future. Workups where we talk as a community. Okay, so now that I'm in Digital Marketers Toolbox and I want to start a new project, the first thing I want to do is open the Market Intel template. And when I click on this, what this is going to open up is basically the eight top market research questions. I found this online. Um, I can't remember the credit was, but whoever did it was great. But it's a great point, and I made a bookmark of it because when I started building Dig DMT, Digital Marketers Toolbox, I wanted to do have a tool that brought all the information that I need to answer these questions. Okay, so in the next example, using this template, I'm going to walk you through what I thought about when I built Digital Marketers Toolbox using these eight questions. Okay, and I'll give you a real world example. But before we do that, the first thing you want to do is go file, make a copy, make your own copy of this. And as you ask yourself these questions, just put your answers in over here. The reason why I say this to you now, be speaking to you a lot about language. 
how we use words, what are the meanings of words, and what is the relationship between the primary keyword that you're targeting and the words that are used in the prefix or the suffix or within the same sentence on the front or the back end of the phrase that you're targeting. We typically talk about this as contextual relevance or thematic relevance. Those are the two words we are going to use going forward. Contextual relevance is what is the context of the entire site? What is this whole thing about? Thematical relevance is what is the specific conversation about so contextual is the entire theme the entire website thematic relevance is for the silo structure for that topic for that single conversation that's about a specific thing okay so let's look at these questions and in this example i'm going to use dmt just to walk you through what i thought here so what's the biggest challenges and frustrations around your topic so at network empire we built basically kraken we built DWS, we built the video solar plugin, we built the one feed supercharger, we built all these great tools and these tools have always been ahead of the curve for years. Network Empire is known for being ahead of the curve with the technology it develops, always. Okay. Biggest problem was there's too much data coming out and having to be put into the next step of the process, into the next tool. So there's a lot of importing, exporting and this made things very complicated. Uh, people got lost in the, the, the process, there's too many steps. How do we solve this problem? When we're doing digital marketing, we want to focus on the 20% that makes money. All the work, the 80% that keeps us busy, detracts from us truly observing the market we want to engage in. Okay. Now, when we speak to people online, we're having a conversation, whether it's through video, whether it's through the written word, whether it's through an image or a meme somehow we pass the message across, right? When we understand what the pains and the frustrations are, that allows us to think very clearly on how we have to build or what we have to build. Okay. So with Digital Marketers Toolbox, the biggest challenge I had and frustration I had, especially with coaching a lot of folks, was all the steps. So how did we solve that? We bought DMT, Digital Marketers Toolbox. Everything's in a single flow. So a single process. So essentially, when you look at the tool, you don't have to come and import or export anything. You don't have to go to another keyword tool to go get keywords to do what you want. You can, after the fact, if that's what you want to do. If you want to make a list of 100,000 keywords, super easy. I'll just use Scrapebox. But I will use the keywords I get out of DMT, Digital Boxes Toolbox, as the thematic stem, and I will then stick it in Scrapebox and fetch all the long tails. And it'll take me, what, a few minutes. Easy to show. But it's just an example. So now that we're in this market intelligence stage, okay, all we need to do essentially is create a profile. Now, what you'll notice in this project here, I've got a profile set up already. Now, this demo was to show you what the $67 comes in. I pretended I was near Patel. So I looked at his site and a reverse engineered authority site. So this, in this particular project that I'm going to show you guys now, I've basically done a market analysis on a specific industry. Okay, and the way I've done this is I've looked at the top authority websites. In other videos, I'm going to show you when we get down to the local level, I'm going to show you how we're going to use DMT for local marketing and how to exploit the most. But the process that we were speaking about earlier was instead of having a complicated system where we had to go jump between tools, everything's in DMT now. Kraken, Killer Keywords, Paint Finder, DWS, everything is in here just better and faster, more intelligent, and it gives us access to information rapidly. Right, so the way DMT works is we create a profile. A profile is essentially the entity that all this data is tied to. So I typically look at it as a, from a company's point of view, and I can create a, a company for that. Okay. So over here, I've just got this demo one here. When I click into the profile, under profiles, we've got projects. Now, if we're building web rings, we can essentially have our WR1 money site. We can have our WR1 blog. WR means web ring. It's the inner ring. It's your branded properties. Okay, so when it's a WR1, when I make mention of WR1, I'm speaking about your branded properties. You could have a wiki, you could have a blog, you could have a, a money site, you could have an educational portal. 
those are four entities, they're four projects, four domains. And if they're public, if they're getting enough traffic, they will pick up uh, a footprint. And DMT helps us find that footprint. So now, when we look at this, you can see I'm in the profile. That's the profile there. If I want to look at a website, I basically just go and put in the domain name as it is there, top level, you can see there. When I stick it in, I then choose any search engine that I want to look at and I give it a description. So over here you can see I've got my W1 Money site, that's my site, I'm just using Neil Patel as an example, and I want to reverse engineer how these guys are getting traffic and what the topics are that they're getting traffic from and what's linking to them, what they're paying for, I just want to get a quick snapshot of what's going on. So as we add these domains, what it does is it brings back intelligence immediately for us. Okay, so we can see the domain authority, the page authority. These are very tough markets. These guys are true market leaders. And we can sort of see how the stack is, how the battlefield is laid. Now when we look at the organic keywords, we can see how many keywords the sites got registered in the SEMrush database. Organic traffic is the total amount of traffic that these sites are potentially getting off these keywords. And organic rank value is how much that traffic value is. So we've blended in Kraken features here, but what it does is allows us to follow the money. Now obviously you can see over here where it's blue, there's over a million dollars getting made a month in traffic value. Okay, Over here we can see that Wordstream, which is a PPC company, is investing heavily in money. So immediately it creates a lay of the land, the stage, the first setting stage of a battlefield. And this is what we call a market analysis. Okay, So I'm going to jump back to the framework and just show you where we're at. So let's just roll back, back quickly. We're starting to work on our online campaign. We go to our framework. The first thing we need to do is the market analysis. This is our recon. We need to get to understand what's going on. So we're going to do a strategic, strategic ass assessment. And for fun, I've made this in a battle format. We're going to be doing battle. We're going to be fighting for rankings. Like Jeff says, uh, SEO bootcamp, the battle for first position is real. Okay. We have to plan for the siege. This is where DMT comes in. The formation, how are we going to attack? The force, how big is it going to be? It answers and gives us interesting things we can look at. So when you come to do your market analysis, the first thing you want to basically do is get to know what are the rules of the game. How is this game played? Who are the players? Okay. So for fun, we got you the way. Seasonal impact, summer, autumn, winter, terrain. Now, they're all DAs of 50 to 100. The terrain's difficult. It's super high. It's going to be a battle. These guys will write a blog post and get thousands of keywords. If I'm starting off fresh, I have no chance. So that means I need to attack or make allies with these authority sites. It changes the way we play this game. So for this campaign, this digital marketing campaign, if we make it a game, we can essentially start thinking out of the box of what we get told because remember people find new methods every single day so methods come and go some stay for a very long time others last shortly okay now when we come to this I want you guys to start thinking about this whole process using the framework as a very smart way to think about how are we actually doing this so the game if we take away all the noise There's people and systems that we're competing with. There's terrain, how Google sees these sites, their authorities all the week. There's logistics, if we get the sales, how do they get to the person? Do we have to take it through trucks? Do we fly it? Does it go through digital places? How does it get delivered? And then who are we fighting with or who are we making allies with? Okay, so you guys get the idea. Now, assessment for comparison This gives us a few questions to really think about what and who are we up against, okay? Just think about that. If we are competing with the electricians down the road, are they doing the yellow pages, they doing Yelp, they doing whatever. Some guys have got networks that just feed them work. Everyone's got a different way of getting leads. We need to understand how that works. Now, when we look at our competitors, why are you looking at a competitor? This is a very, very important thing because a lot of guys come into market research and they try and break into the market but they have no idea of where they're going or what they're doing. And the very first question is, okay, how do we solve the problem? 
So we have to figure out how these guys are solving out the problem. Okay, the next thing we have to do is, what are these problems costing you? Now from DMT's point of view and all our old tools, these guys had to buy a whole bunch of subscriptions to get access to different parts of the, the puzzle. Now with Digital Marketers Toolbox, we've brought everything into one unique process. We can come in and create a profile for a company, add the projects that we're working on, whether it be market analysis or whether it be just looking at them specifically, we can then drop into any domain and see exactly what's going on like there. If they're not blocking X frames, we get to see straight away what they're saying, what their pitches are. Okay. And we've also get access to the market analysis, the semantic cluster, all the information. We just fold in one domain and it gives us all the information back. We add products and themes, which we'll deal with later on. But you can see here we've got a linear process. We do our market research, we add our products in and map out our funnels. We design a site how we think it's gotta be and we export it out. And all this data that we can export out, we can use for digital marketing blueprints. We can use it for mass site generation. We can use it for anything that we wanna do for our rice stacks, our ROIS stacks. Okay, so the, the process is very simple. What you guys need to do to come back to this is open up this link, which you'll find on the profiles, sorry, on the dashboard. Step one, market Intel template. Think about the product you're selling and ask these questions. Okay, so it's a bit of a long uh, explanation, but I needed to just walk you and hop you through so that you can actually see what we're doing. So just to recap in one second, when you do your market analysis, there's a lot of things that come into consideration from a top level overview. Okay, a lot of things to think about all the way through. But to make this very simple for you, I've given you this process, the market research process, find pains in the market. You can get it from search engines, social search engines, online shopping carts, local business listing sites. Okay. If you take your pain keyword and you type it in, you'll see what comes back. You can search in groups, books like Amazon and review sites. You can quickly find out what people like and do not like by looking at these things through looking for reviews. Okay, the reviews is the key thing. Another way is through surveys. You can utilize Google Forms that we basically get when we set up our business structure on 360 through surveys. We can get free forms or we can pay. We can actually take this survey that we create and we can push it into the attribution or the audition center, uh, sorry, the audience center. And what that does is you can pay per lead using surveys, but we'll cover that a bit more in more detail in a power call. To make the market research very, very simple, start off with Google, okay? Open up Google and type in the topic and look for what people are saying. The same is go to the search engines and look for groups that are associated with the topic and find it. Online shopping, go to Amazon, go to books in Amazon, type in the topic, see what books come back, see who the authors are because the authors lead to authorities. When you understand who the authorities are, you can essentially find their websites. If their websites are good and not competing with you, that becomes an ally. We can actually add their RSS feed and use that information as a source if they are experts in a specific topic. Um, the RSS feed can be used for many, many things. You can even create relationships with these people because now you're aware of who they are in the conversation. That's the whole point of market analysis. So use a search engine to get what you want. Two, um, don't just use Google all the time to do your searches. Go across to DuckDuckGo. You'll get a different perspective. So you can open up Google, do the search. Open up DuckDuckGo, do the search. What two things are gonna happen? Um, I'll just show this to you quickly. Yes, what people are looking for. Okay, so I just used the how to as a modifier on the, 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 the segment beard oil. Your market would be beard, single word phrase. Beard oil is a market segment. Okay, now the how to, when you use that as a modifier, 
on that it allows us to unlock all the variants also when you do this here we can actually look and see what they are saying how to apply beard oil recipes and very quickly you can see what guys are saying okay so I just wanted to show you guys a little trick uh, as soon as you're dealing with politics and different things the search engines uh, show a bit of bias <laughs> so it's quite interesting when you look at it from that point of view but uh, when you're doing market analysis and you need to answer the questions use the eight top market research questions as your guidelines think about what what you're doing so let's go through this what was my biggest challenge and frustration there were too many steps in the process I had to import export and do too many things that took up too much time to get to the end result what was that problem costing me it was costing me time and it was frustrating and after a while I just can't be asked using the tool anymore so I didn't get the full maximum power out of the tool how did I solve that we cleaned up the process we integrated all the tools into one linear process and there's no more importing and exporting you start at the top you fill in two forms you add a domain or you add a product for your funnel and the data is there prepped and ready for you what goals do you have for your topic this year okay so I want to show you guys how to get the most out of digital marketers toolbox I want to show you how it's convenient and how we can use this to actually make money uh, some of our certified advisors have basically come in they spent 65 bucks as a tester and they've sold that for a $2,000 blueprint as an example so straight away the tool is making money for you okay so that's how my goal is to make as many people as possible aware of the tool that are in our industry because I find it very very useful okay if uh, what customers uh, what would your uh, customer life look like if they accomplish these goals well before we did digital marketing you had to go to multiple sources to fetch the information that you needed then you had to import export and do all that stuff again to compile reports now with digital marketers toolbox the typical lifestyle is going to be the guy's going to come in he's got a customer on the phone he logs into digital marketers toolbox he types in the domain name over here so he's going hi there mr smith how are you doing please tell me a little bit about yourself um, could I get your website just to see what you're looking at and uh, I'm just going to put the guy's name, his email, his phone number he's going to type the business name in, he's going to create a profile the chatting, 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 he selects his profile he's going to type in a domain name, boom 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 as he does that he's just going to type this as the customer's w one in the notes and what the guy wants to achieve and he's going to press submit the conversation is going to go on a bit more as the information comes back you'll click into it and as he clicks into it he gets a summary straight away of what's going on in his website and he can talk to the customer about his website in real time if X frames are not included yeah you can see the snapshot of how much keywords traffic and cost on organic and paid is he can see what's going on and he can look at see all the missed opportunities so email subject lines 3600 searches a month he's in position number four that's a quick win what's going to take to move that page into the location so can you see very quickly how we're using market research to break down and analyze things very very quickly with no effort so that's how we solved that problem over there now if you could have any question answered about your topic what would it be well typically if you think about digital marketers what are the questions they have to ask they need to know who they're competing with how they position their products what's the price is it profitable can they actually break into the market what type of traffic medium do they have to use must it be PPC what's the marketing plan what's the content plan there's all the stuff there's so much stuff that they have to do and uh, what I've done with digital marketer toolbox is I made it a lot simpler I've condensed the information I've done 80% of the work and now you just sit at the 20% and you actually think about your market and the screen shows this information so very quickly as we're going through this process and as we're looking at whatever information comes back over here we get to see exactly what's going on so step one for this week guys is go and figure out what it is that you're doing this is what I want you guys to do I want you to just focus on this okay and be very clear on what you're doing there once you've got that done go back to your dashboard in digital marketers toolbox when you come to number three what they are you selling what I want you guys to do this week is to start thinking about what you're selling and filling in just this basic information map it out okay then I want you to 
look at the keyword qualification matrix. Read through this and see if you understand it because I want to do a whole session just on keywords. How we create keywords. Because if we are selling apartments, okay, who are we selling apartments to? I'll quickly take you through this. With this simple method, what you can do is very quickly construct keyword shingles, keyword strings that go into your sentences and that go into your paragraphs that clearly define to the search engines what it is that you're trying to achieve. Okay, So if you think about the TDF, IDF process that a lot of people are talking about and, and look at your competitors and finding the best words that are needed, the keyword qualification matrix helps you clearly define not only the words that are needed, but who you're speaking to. Okay, Now, what you're going to find in this document are three important things. One, it allows you to drop your ideas. Two, you have this keyword qualification matrix as a reminder. And then three, at the bottom of the, the document we're going to look at shortly, it's going to give you a lot of questions you can ask yourself when you try to determine who your persona and profile is that you can be selling to. Okay, so once you've gotten a good idea and you come back to look at keywords within the Digital Marketers Toolbox, when you use the keyword qualification matrix that I'm showing you over here, you're going to think about the words in a different context. It's going to be more about the topic and how you're blending the conversation to clearly define what it is that you're selling to that person. Okay. So the way it works is this. The keywords are broken down into four parts. We've got a descriptor, we've got a type, We've got purchase intent, we've got location. Now typically the top, the number two, is what we get on any keyword tool. With the keyword qualification matrix, what it allows you to do is take any type of keyword and very quickly determine or construct who the target audience is. Okay, so number one, description. It describes the intent. Number two, type think about an object that describes a thing purchase intent how is this person going to get this thing this object whatever it is and number four location where are they going to get this object if you keep in your head the four properties of a keyword descriptor type purchase intent and location you can very very quickly combine keywords okay so descriptor we're going to work through this now, and we're going to look at two people. Some people have money, other people don't have money. So I want to talk to the guys who got money. So I'm going to use the modifier. This descriptor is our best. Okay. The next thing I'm after is apartments. It can be a house, it can be land, it can be an office. What am I selling? What's the type? I'm selling an object. It's an apartment. So I want the best apartment. Now if we come to number three, the purchase intent. Do I want to buy it or do I want to hire it? So can you see how we're constantly splitting hairs as we're going through the matrix? So I'm going to say I want to buy it. It must be for sale. And then lastly, the location, where? In New York. What it does is it gives us, for the keyword apartments, We've got best apartments for sale in New York. Okay, that describes specifically what's the intent of that phrase. Okay, now when we start constructing headlines like this, we start dropping sentences that are designed like this into our copy using the most important words that are used within the context of the entire conversation, contextual relevance. We can create pages and URL structures that are very, very powerful that clearly tell the user what the topic is about, but more importantly, it tells the search engines what the relationships are. And what happens there is when the search engines actually rank and fall to your pages, based on how you're using the words and the keywords in your sentence structures, in your paragraphs, that then will give you a better alignment with the audience that you're trying to speak to because it understands. Now, if your, word, if your, your, your language is too thin on the page or not clearly defined or if there are synonyms that are bound to, for example, here's an example for you. Let's just say we've got a football club. You can be trying to talk about the town, but if you talk about a location, 
that's very popular within a town. You could skew that ranking, con uh, con that ranking context. That page could rank for more for the football club than actually the town. So depending on how you use the modifiers in the keyword qualification matrix, it allows you to clearly define what it is that you're speaking to. So I just wanted to end on that one there. Okay, so make sure that you read through this and understand it. Then you can run through this and just drop some ideas. But as you come down, to find the pain in the market within Digital Marketers Toolbox, we've got a really great feature here. So you can come into any profile, you can drop into any domain, Okay, so I'll just drop in there. And whatever we add in the profile, it'll automatically extract all the questions. And what this does is a very interesting thing. When we add our products, okay, you can see on Neil Patel, I've added two products to that domain, as if it was mine. I can come in here, I can select digital marketing, and I say set the product. What this is gonna do is gonna show me my funnel. I believe that I will sell this, I'm gonna get ranked for this keyword in this category for this price, I'm gonna make so much profit and there's my final conversions. When I click on any of the keywords, how, what, when, where, which, who, why, or can, I can show as many keywords as I want. And what this does is it goes and looks at the entire cluster, all the projects that we have within the profile and pulls back the keywords. So we can click on this and it'll open up a blog how do you start a blog? We can see the URL. We can see the headline. We can see the context. We can analyze this page and see exactly how he stacked this whole page and what he's done. Okay, so very, very quickly, we can get the questions. So what this does is it looks at your funnel and looks at the traffic that those questions have and it shows you where the money flows. So if you look at these top 10 questions here, they dominate sales on buy buttons, on phone calls, and on emails purely because of the amount of traffic that they have. So we can see the Google search, we can see the natural click through, we can see the conversions, how much it means to us in money, okay, if we rank number one for these keywords. So this helps us really reverse engineer very quickly, but we can go cherry pick our best keywords that we want to write about and shove them into our template, okay, and we can stick them in here and blend them. Okay, the next thing is who's our ideal customer, very basic, but we've added this whole section of how to create a persona, okay? And you can basically look at this and you can see the demographics, the backstories. You don't have to answer all these questions, okay? It's just to help you because it unlocks different ways of thinking where you can find the people that you want to sell to. Now, in many instances, you can create an online campaign, but sometimes it becomes difficult to do stuff online, but doesn't mean that you can't sell to those people. You might just end up discovering that you're going to drop flyers in that specific locale, which is much cheaper to break into the market. So always think out of the box, guys, when you do your market analysis, because whatever you determine and figure out here now is going to be used when we start building your website. So we do market analysis, and then we set up the site, we build the site, we're gonna go through this process. Once we build our site, we're gonna then look at our structure, that's the architecture that we built, and then we're gonna drop our content on top of that. Now, another benefit of the questions over here is, you got 483 questions that need answering on the how, on the what. You're looking at a lot of content you could write if it's relevant to what you're selling. Okay, so look at that one there. Those two keywords there, they've got a lot of money flowing through them. Those guys are making over a million bucks in sales based on this, this funnel. Okay, so you want to find out what those things are. So that's market research, guys. What we have in market research is top backlinks, the semantic cluster, the market analysis, and questions. So we come in and we've added our domains. That's unlocked all these features for us in minutes. The market analysis is a one-to-one -one relationship. I can jump to Mars, to any of these sites I've looked and looked at what's going on in their world. The semantic cluster basically shows us all the keywords for all these domains on one screen. Okay, so keep your themes tight and keep them relevant. If you start adding rogue websites, you're gonna burn credits and um, 
There's no point putting a competitor in that's not, not got nothing to do with you. Don't waste your time. This is going to dilute and make your, your, your subset uh, messy. Okay, so guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this so far. What you want to do is go through there and define who you're selling to. This is the most important part. Come in, add your domain. Press submit. It's going to come back. Click into your domain. Come down to your product. Click on new product. Give your product a name. Add the keyword. The longer the tail the keyword becomes, the less data comes back. So if you put a five or six or seven word phrase in here, don't expect much results back. If you use locales in your phrase, don't expect much results back. Um, this data gets pulled from uh, SEMrush and a few other sources, and the longer the keyword tail, the better. So when you're adding your products, start higher up. Like you can see over here, I've got digital market keyword tool. I'm doing like one or two word phrases, three word phrases. What that allows me to do is then look at the market from a top level overview. One, I want to see where the traffic flows in the market. Two, I want to see where the money flows in the market. Three, I want to see what are the top themes that are commanding attention. Marketing digital. Okay, that's a, another one as well. And uh, I want to see what are the top videos. So when we add products, it gives us access to the related terms, the phrase terms, the top five competitors that are here. What are the keywords these pages are ranking for? So if we go to the Wikipedia page and I switch this out, I can see all the keywords that page is ranking for. I can see the missed opportunities. I can see the ones that are competitive purely by the color coding in the rows. So it gives us a lot of insights. And number one, we can flip through all the top pages and see how they're getting traffic. So straight away, when I look at this page, what is digital marketing? Yeah, we can see how the keywords are coming in. Which ones are ranking? Digital marketing basics is number one, 170. If we adjust this page, we can start tapping into the bigger traffic. So it helps us to really unlock the market. It helps us look at our own products. It helps us to establish where we are and where the gaps and the opportunities are when we work in our own properties. And if it's a brand new website, don't be scared, okay? Um, this is very important. A lot of you guys might be making brand new websites. When you come and create a profile, you set it up, you come in, you add your domain, and nothing comes back. It's purely because there's no footprint online for your website yet. This is where we recommend you go look at one of your authority sites in the market, who's dominating the market, and you add them. And you start building your structure based on what they're doing that's working well. Okay, so that's it for today, guys. Um, this is stage one, market analysis. I'm going to take the screenshots and put them on the page. You'll see all the information below. And this is the process you're going to apply today when you use Digital Marketers Toolbox. So I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you guys in the next session.